One of the most interesting local filmmakers is Port Adelaide's Mike Retter. Mike's made two features to date, Stanley's Mouth and Youth on the March, both of which have screened as part of the Adelaide Film Festival, and he's currently shooting his third film and most ambitious work, a wine region set thriller entitled Claire de Lune. Mike's also one of the leading filmmakers in the vertical cinema movement, where his films have been shot in a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. That's 9 wide, 16 tall, much closer to the video you would shoot on your phone rather than the video you'd watch on TV or in a cinema. I spoke with Mike about all of this and more, including some tips for wannabe filmmakers struggling to take the plunge. The current project is uh, is hard to comment on, but I would say it's the greatest artistic experience of my life, and I think it will be the most uh, complete film. The first one, Stanley's Mouth, was like my film school. Uh, Youth on the March was kind of like a, a real-world graduation piece, and I think that this one will be the, the one that cuts through because it's the culmination of, of knowledge from all the other um, projects, and it's way more ambitious, uh, which created problems and challenges for sure, but it had that thing that films can do, which is um, just be transformative. Um, it's a transformative process for the filmmaker. So it's a, a film starring Hebe Sace as a, a young winemaker who's taking over from her father who's retiring in a climate of industrial sabotage, espionage, um, a furious winter, and um, the personal relations and paranoia in that. And... Um, I didn't realise until maybe I've shot 75% of it that it's actually a horror film. It's just not particularly graphic. It's, um, it's like a classical horror. So, Mike, I originally heard this film described as an erotic thriller. So now that you've realised it's more of a horror film, how does that change the process? How does that change what you're making? Like I said, it's very classical horror. People wouldn't call it horror now because it's not torture porn. Um, but uh, it, it's really a horror. Um, at the moment, I'm obsessed with theme and aesthetic and marrying them together and um i th and, and because i think it's going well it actually makes you very happy um but there's still you know always challenges that uh make you concerned and cautious you know when you're making it i'm always worried um what didn't i get is there something missing um but yeah the, the, every shoot is a discovery every time and um uh, pushing hard to make it visually interesting and um, and I love just being inspired by cinema. I, I, I love cinema, whether it's um, Rocky IV or Peter Greenaway's um, Prospero's books. There's so many things to be uh, very indirectly inspired by. I don't directly take shots, but I, 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 I like to see what people are getting at. And then, you know, when you're on location shooting and having to bounce off reality, you... Um, uh, you, you try to, yeah, just channel the history of cinema and be in debt to it and, and, and love it. It's almost like a faith in, in cinema. Speaking of inspiration, why this film? What made you realise that Claire de Lune would be the next project you'll work on? I think I wanted to make a film that was rural and I wanted to make a film about adults as opposed to young people. I felt um, if I was going to spend all this time shooting a film, I wanted to be somewhere that I enjoyed the... The feeling, and whenever I go into the Adelaide Hills or go to Yankalula, Normanville, where I'm from, or, or, the, or the Barossa, I, I go, why do I live in Adelaide or, or Port Adelaide? Why do I do this? So I, I, I decided uh, that, that that's the setting I would like. And I also wanted to make a film about adults, um, maybe as I'm growing as a filmmaker, maybe as I'm growing up, it's time to tell an adult story. These things are usually on lag. You're usually making films about things that happened, you know, ten years ago or f or five years ago. So it's a constant catch up because a, a film is really a three year gestation if you include the writing, um, shooting, and, and editing. And the you know, by the time it's released, it's usually old news by the time people see it. You know, how much of a script or a fleshed out idea for the film do you start with? This had a much stronger script than usual and uh, stronger visual ideas uh, going in. Um, for instance, okay, there's more dialogue in it. And I wanted to do it because it's a vertical film again. I wanted to have these um, almost uh, POV tableaus of um, people looking straight down the camera and then just cutting to another person looking straight down the camera for these very intimate uh, conversations. And then I, I realized that's the perfect aspect ratio also for Auslan, sign language. 
uh, because um, widescreen would make the person quite small in the middle of the frame and not show so much of their body. It, you really, people that are using Auslan are, are speaking with um, everything, you know, every, everything above the hips, you know, you're, you're, you're very expressive. So that was an, that was an opportunity um, to write a character and to depict that, I think, in the, in the best way possible where vertical wasn't actually a hindrance but, but actually a, a sort of help. Um, Had it been a hindrance in the past? Um, it's not that it's an obstacle to overcome. It's just that you can do it really badly and not realize it. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I think I made the second vertical film to right the wrongs of the first one. And I think the ambition of this new film would be to actually popularize that uh, for cinema. I mean, I don't need to popularize the vertical aspect ratio. Everybody shoots that way with their phone. It's already prevalent. But I, I really think this could be the one where people actually have an open mind for it and see the um, visual possibilities uh, you know, it's not that it's better. It's just that it's um, it's a legitimate way to shoot a film. And I'm not going to do this forever either. But I've just been trying to refine something. So you've said it's better utilized this time. Are you also just more confident in the material and what you have as a creator? Yeah, I, I think um, what's great about the early part of your career as a filmmaker, particularly if you don't start out brilliantly, is that uh, usually you're on the up. So it's like each film is twice as good as the last one. Uh, I'm pretty certain that that's the case this time. And that's that's good because I, I think my last film was all right. Um, so, you know, yeah, very confident about it, yes. Um, quite confident because I'm in it, um, in the creative process, working with the actors and um, often a tiny crew, sometimes just me. And I'll do lighting, I'll do sound, I'll do everything um, because I've got a just a way of like a sort of production methodology that's uh, very simple. Yeah, that's why I recommend people shoot with just high-end camcorders. I, I, I'm shooting on 4K, but it's a camcorder, which means it's got a shotgun microphone on the top, and I can be quite physically close uh, to the actors, and therefore that's a, that's a boom microphone directly at their mouth. That's as good as what we're recording now. Yeah. Um, so that eliminates the need for a, a boom swinger. Uh, I shoot handheld, which um, means it's not slowed down by constantly moving and setting up and carrying a big tripod. And lighting, half the time I'll have someone do mobile lighting or if there's um, two actors, I'll, I'll have the actor that's not in the shot ho uh, holding a light. I don't have light stands, but I will place them sometimes on different things as, as, as if they were light stands um, to get certain shots if I'm alone. Th there's always a way. There's always a way. And I'm, I mean, if you study cinema, there's, there's people that had far harder situations than me in making a movie, and, and they did a good job. There's a guy, I forget the director, but a Brazilian guy who, who used to make these um, films called Coffin Joe, these black and white horror films. And they talked about how they'd be shooting in this tiny little studio, and, and all the lights were blowing one by one to the point where they only had one light left. But that, that actually made it better. So, so, like, you know, film noir came out of poverty like the, the real film noir films um were, were made in a place uh, just away from the the studios in hollywood it was called poverty row and they weren't even making they, they were often only 50 60 minutes because uh, there were b pictures you'd see that directly after you know the, the 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 main feature um and they had to create aesthetic cheaply hence you'd, it'd be all black except for maybe some you know side lighting you know with the person smoking a cigarette and a big puff of smoke just lights up and it's gorgeous and it didn't cost anything so it's quite a comfort then knowing you can overcome limitations of budget or scope it's it's the i guess the old adage of write what you know write what you have access to um what limitations are on this current project do you think i can honestly say we were not ready to make this film but i could say that for the last one and you could say that for any big step in life uh, we were not ready. I was not ready. So you just have to start? Yeah. No one's ready. Until you've made a movie, you're not ready. Does that mean you never make one? It's a paradox. Change is a paradox. Things stay the same for a reason. Trust me, um, the easiest thing to do in the world is not make a film. That's, you know, I did that yesterday. Or, you know, that's, that's easy. No, we weren't ready. Uh, and that forces you to learn quick. Learning, real learning where you're being challenged um, hurts physically, mentally. But it's learning, you know. <laughs> it's just like a, a, a rocky training montage. And I'm, I'm not even joking um, because 
you know, those films are about something that's impossible, you shouldn't be able to achieve, and, and, and you do. Um, sometimes you have to stop being neurotic and, 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 and look at the world very uh, simply uh, and, and arch- archetypally, otherwise you'll be bogged down in yeah, neuroses and academic thinking and, and second guessing, and sometimes you need to make things real simple um, so they can be done. And, and that could be as, as much as saying, okay, we're going to make this movie, we're going to make it work. With this film, even though we'd made a film before, this was way more ambitious. I mean, the other one, everything we shot was pretty much within walking distance of Port Adelaide. Whereas, whereas this one, we're being much more choosy with locations and and, and being much more sort of particular. Um, but uh, And it forced us to change the plan sometimes. What happens when you go to shoot in the rain and the rain doesn't come? It's really, you know, uh, yeah, you, you have to roll with it. Otherwise, it, it will defeat you. Um, so you kind of need to be flexible and roll with the punches, see the opportunities that, that are there because sometimes they're better than the, the original concept. So, you know, things change. Uh, and you, you just got to be creative and clever to get around that. Uh, and, and that's the cleverness of, of a low-budget filmmaker. Whereas uh, maybe someone who's trained to work in a traditional way couldn't budge from an original idea. Fearlessly do it, even in an unprepared way. Shoot, edit, shoot, edit. Um, get, get those muscles uh, sort of flexing and, and start getting those skills. Um, and you know what? It's okay if it doesn't work out uh, every time. And it's okay uh, because learning hurts. And uh, the sooner you stop being a wuss and, and you go make a, make a, a, a film, particularly a feature film, that's, that's the heavy lifting. If you get one of those done, even if it's crap, people will still respect you. Um, and uh, and you'll be in a position to then improve on that. But you might make a really good film. Like you you re- you really might. You you either do it or you don't. So 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 just go do it. Make it hard and fast and as simple as that. Some very passionate words there from Port Adelaide-based filmmaker Mike Retter, and I think it's that kind of attitude that bodes well for his current film, Claire de Lune, which is still in production, but his previous work is certainly getting a lot of recognition, and I believe Youth on the March, his second feature, is even screening at the Melbourne Underground Film Festival in the next week or so.